When it comes to selecting a disc, we use the flight numbers to help us decide which one to purchase. There's so many options that when you search online, it can be overwhelming to decide which disc is right for you. However, there's another number that's more important than any of the four flight numbers stamped on the front of your disc. It's on the back. I'm sure you've seen all the grades going through their disc selection in their in the bag videos and saw that their distance drivers are all high speed discs and all at max weight. And if you're like me, hoping to get long distance, you went out and purchased a 175 gram destroyer or Hades, hoping it would add distance to your throw. But alas, the result you get when throwing this disc is inevitable. Barely any flat flight, immediate hyzer, and no more distance than when you throw your buzz or your rock. Why is this? To understand that, we have to understand a little bit of how discs work. Every time you go to throw a disc, there's a point in the throw where it finally leaves your hand. This point is called the moment of inertia. It's the amount of rotational force you can put on a disc, and it's often referred to as arm speed in disc golf. It also varies from person to person depending on your strength and form. But the truth is, those flight numbers don't mean anything unless you can put a certain amount of rotational force on the disc. To understand why the weight of a disc is so important, we first have to understand the correlation between weight and speed. So let's take a look at two discs, the 12 speed destroyer and the five speed rock, both 175 grams. If you look at the back of the disc, you'll notice that the destroyer has a wide rim and a more aerodynamic angle, and the rock has a narrower rim with a more blunted edge. This is one of the main components of disc speed. When you're talking about speed, you're really talking about what percentage of weight is distributed in the rim versus the body. So if you look at the relationship between weight and speed, you'll see that at 175 grams, the 12 speed destroyer has a higher percentage of that 175 grams in the rim and less in the body. And alternatively, the five speed rock has a lower percentage in the rim and a higher percentage in the body. What this means is that the moment of inertia, it is easier to impart force on a rock than a destroyer. Let me show you what I mean. I have two systems set up to represent our two different speed discs. Both are equal in weight and both have a constant amount of force being imparted. That represents your arm speed. Here on the left, you can see I have the weights distributed closer to the center, representing our mid-range disc, with more of the weight in the body than on the rim. Here on the right, you can see those four weights have been shifted to the edge, closer to the where the rim would be. That means there's more weight in the rim than on the body. This represents our distance driver. So let's see what happens when I let the force impart its inertia onto the disc. You can clearly see that the disc with the weight closer to the center was able to rotate much faster than the disc with the weights distributed to the rim. This shows that it's easier to impart rotational force on discs with weight distributed closer to the center. This is why experienced players always recommend putting and mid-range discs to beginners. They're generally said to be easier to control, but the truth is it takes less force to get a proper flight path out of those discs. And when you can predict your flight path, you'll be rewarded with more consistent play. But what if you're trying to step up your game and you want to start throwing drivers? Let's see how this idea of rotational inertia can help our decision in which disc to select. Here we have the same system set up once more. However, this time, on the left, we have the same high-speed driver with the weights distributed towards the edges. On the right, we have the same concept, high-speed driver, weights to the edges, except now the weights are lighter. Our constant weight imparts its force, and you can see that even though both sets of weights are distributed towards the edges, the disc with the lighter weights rotates faster. This means it's easier to put rotational force onto a disc with a lighter rim, even if there's more weight on the edges than in the body. So here are two destroyers. Both have the same flight numbers, except one is 175 grams and one is 165. They both have the same percentage of mass in the rim of their disc, but it's proportional to their own weight. That means if the heavier disc needs X amount of force for proper flight, then the lighter one needs 6% less force because it's 94% of the weight. As you continue to reduce the weight of the disc, you continue to reduce the force needed for proper flight. This, however, does come with a caveat. Lighter discs are more susceptible to wind, and once you impart too much force, you will lose any of its flight characteristics and it will become extremely understable. This is why pros throw max weight discs, because they have the ability and form to obtain a proper flight path from heavier discs, and the added weight gives them the most control, especially in windy conditions. I know that we want to go out there and throw our max weight discs and throw them as far as the pros, but the truth is, if you're throwing with poor form, 
you're gonna get poor results. And it's only gonna make it harder to correct and improve your arm speed. Imagine going to the gym and trying to hit the weights. You can go and try and bench 225, and you might be able to get one, maybe two reps, but your form will be terrible and you risk injury and likely minimizing your gains in the process. In reality, if you lower your weight and train with proper form, you'll be able to increase the weight gradually over time and continue to make gains. Now, I don't know the magic formula to tell you exactly what weight to throw. It'll vary from person to person. So I suggest experimenting with different weights and speeds in order to find the sweet spot for your current arm speed. However, I found a good rule of thumb is the lower the speed, the higher the weight. And as you up the speed of the disc, then start lowering the weight. Right now, my fairway drivers are 167 grams and my distance drivers are 163 grams. My mid ranges are all 175 and above. So that's why ultimately you should first be concerned with the weight of the disc you're going to throw while looking at the flight numbers. Finding out the sweet spot for your arm speed compared to the speed of the disc will make a world of difference when you go out to throw. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the content, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you wanna see more content like this, please leave a comment down below.